Hi guys, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, hi, welcome. I'm Ashley Elizabeth and I'm a makeup artist from the UK. And if you're not new here, welcome back. So seeing as though I had a little break of YouTube in the last year, I decided what better way to restart my journey on here than a full face of my current favourite products. Got to keep you all up to date. So that is what we're doing today. So these are just all the products that are my absolute holy grails at the moment, whether they came out 2020, 2019, whatever. They're not necessarily new products. These are just some of the ones I've found myself reaching for more often out of my kit. So without further ado, here we go. So I did have two favourite foundations this year, so I'm going to give them a little mix. So the first one is the NARS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation, and this is in the shade Barcelona. I have got tan on, but I think this still might be a little bit too dark for me. So I'm going to grab my other favourite foundation, and this is the Maybelline Superstay Foundation, and this is the shade True Ivory. Obviously, it's really light. So I'm going to give these a little mix together to get a nice shade for myself. I like mixing finishes of foundations together. So the NARS foundation is a little bit more glowy, a little bit less coverage, things like that. So I like mixing that with the Maybelline foundation just to bring a little bit more matteness to my face because I am a bit more on the oily side and also to bring a little bit of that coverage because the Maybelline coverage is phenomenal. This has gone a little bit darker than I'd hoped. We can brighten it back up with concealer. Then again, it kind of ma ma it matches my hands a bit better. Just looking in the camera, it looks incredibly yellow at the moment, but we'll see what happens. I feel like I've invested in some more good quality makeup than previous years. Just to make sure I don't ruin them brows, I'm just taking a smaller brush just to get right around them. I forgot to mention the brush I'm using is the Peaches and Cream PC19. This is my all-time favourite foundation brush. It's just really good at building up coverage and really pressing it into the skin, getting it really worked in. So moving on to concealer and I'm going to go in with my Huda Beauty Overachiever Concealer and I've got the shade Marshmallow. So this is a few shades lighter than my foundation. Obviously, because I've gone a little bit darker with my face, I'm going to use my concealer to now brighten it back up. This concealer is amazing. It's very high coverage. If you are a bit more on the dry side and maybe you've got a few fine lines under your eyes, maybe stay away from this concealer a little bit. I'm just getting that on all over under eye area and then I like to just bring it up to create like a nice uplifting shape and then whatever excess is on my brush I'm just doing sort of the other high points of my face which are forehead, nose and the chin and then I'm just going to grab my Molly O'Brien Nat brush and just start buffing that in. So I have mentioned this a million times before but I do like to leave my under eye to the very last just to allow it time to start warming up to my skin just because it makes it a little bit brighter. And I really, really like a bright, bright under eye. I think I'm going to brighten my under eye up a little bit more. So I'm going to use another one of my favourite concealers at the moment, which is the NARS Soft Matte Concealer. And I've got the shade Chantilly, which is obviously really light. Get that brush I've just blended all that concealer in with and just get that right on those inner corners just to give a bit of life back make me not look so tired these two concealers are beautiful i want to get more of these ones the nars ones then for my under eye powder i'm going to go in with my absolute holy grail and it's the huda beauty easy bake loose setting powder and this is in the shade pound cake this thing lasts a lifetime so how i like to use this is i'm just getting a real technique setting brush and I like to press it into the powder and then tap it all off. So it looks like there is nothing on the brush, but I promise you when I go in with it, there is still tons on there. And this powder, it's like magic in a pot. It just blares all of your pores. It just makes you look so much more airbrushed. So 
here we are with this kind of skin and i'm going to go ahead now and start with like blusher bronzer so one thing i have started enjoying doing is doing my blusher before bronzer so for my blush this was a nice little find one day i'm going to go in with the nyx sweet cheeks blush these are the glow style and I've got the shades Citron Rose and Summer Breeze. NYX Cosmetics do do every single one of these colours in both matte and glow blush, which I think is a really good idea. So I just like to give these a little mix because obviously that's very peach, that's very pink. But when they mix together, they're just the perfect tone. So I'm just grabbing my PC03 from Peaches and Cream. I am a blush lover, by the way, so don't hate if it goes too far. But see how just soft and sheeny that blush is. I am a huge, huge lover of glowy blush. So this can help like giving a nice glow to the skin even before you get to the highlighter point. Just like to go a little bit on my chinny chin chin. Then for bronzer, this is one I treated myself to when I went to America at the beginning of 2020. I can't believe that's nearly been a year. So it is the NARS Bronzing Powder and this is in the shade Laguna. This looks like a little bit more cool toned in the pan, but it is my most favourite bronzer. This is really nice as well because you can keep it nice, soft and natural or you can build it up if you really want to amp up that bronze on your face. And it just blurs into that blush. And I can get away with using this bronzer when I'm both tanned or when i am ham when i ham when i am more on the paler end and i don't go in too heavy at all i just like adding a little bit of warmth to like the outer portions of my face So next on to highlighter and this one is a very recent purchase of mine so i have always been one for like pressed highlighters so i absolutely adore fenty and the be perfect and mitchell palette so this one was a cheeky little find it is the inglot sparkling dust face body eyes and this is in the shade number two so this is is a loose highlighter i just feel like the finish of this product just is so much nicer it doesn't go on too heavy but it still gives that nice blind and glow but it creates that kind of like wet look glow which i love so i'm just going to grab my buff and blend bb08 and i literally whatever's in the lid that's just all i use i don't need to use much of this at all at that sheen and it's got no background colors you know sometimes you can get them highlighters which have got like a really strong background color so when you're not in direct light they have like a bit of a shade behind them because it is like a finely milled powder it does just blend into your other products so nicely so there's no real harsh lines there and that is it for skin at the moment so i'm gonna zoom you in and we'll get started on the eyes so i did cheat a little bit and i popped off camera and completed one eye first because i kind of didn't really have a general idea of where i wanted to go with this look so i'm going to show you now this one so to prime my eyelids of course i'm going to use my all-time favorite p louise eyeshadow base so this is the shade number two but so even though i have got a bit more of a tan this is still like a really nice shade for me i feel like using the lighter shades helps you know it helps your eyeshadows pop a bit more you know the pigments shine through a bit better i think when you're doing more colorful looks it's better to use the lighter tones so i'm sure you all know about this product by now but i'm just going to share why i love it and why it's one of my faves it's the best thing i've used to build eyeshadow on top of and to get your eyeshadow to stick to so you don't get patches and create really nice bright colorful looks it's the only base i've used that allows me to do so i also really like the fact that p louise does have a variation in colors i know i've just said it's better to use the lighter colors but obviously not everyone is this tone so there is a very wide range of colors and you can use them for all different things and it's just super super easy to use 
and it is so full coverage like I have got an abundance of veins in my eyelids and this just completely blanks them out. So for eyeshadow today, I had to choose none other than the Be Perfect Cosmetics and Stacey Marie Carnival 3 Love Tahiti Palette. So this is the inside. I feel like it was a little bit of a tradition on this channel to review the new carnival palettes as they came out but when this one came out a little bit earlier in the year i did toy with the idea of creating a video with it but i just wasn't in the right headspace to sit down and film for youtube so i just kind of skipped over it so this is going to be my first play with this on my youtube channel so this palette is incredible it's stacy marie all of the carnival palettes are amazing but obviously this one is more on the colorful side there is far less neutrals in here than the previous palettes and i just i think some of the colors are to die for like this whole entire purple section like you can see some of the ones that I have loved a bit too much. I feel like this goes incredibly well with Carnival XL Pro. So this is that's the palette before this one. So if you have both of them, you don't really need much else because Carnival XL Pro, you've got your neutrals and this is your colours. So I do think they paired up very, very well together. But I am just going to be using this today. So I'm just going to grab my Morphe M507, which is one of my Holy Grail brushes. So it is just this super teeny tiny eyeshadow blender also quick side note this look is inspired by stacy marie thought what better time to do this look than when i am um, using one of her palettes so the first shade i'm going to go into is this deep purple shade which is called blackberry and i'm going to build this up in my crease one thing I love about Stacey Marie, just as an artist, is the colour combinations she puts together. So, because I've seen this on her face already, like, obviously, I can visualise how these colours go together. But I never, ever would have put purple with browns and, like, a khaki yellow, which is essentially what this is. So I've just blended off that outer edge and now I'm going to go in with my second shade. And for this, I'm going to grab a clean M507 and I'm going to go in with like the brownie tone of the palette, which is called Coco. It is a lot more ready toned than it appears in the pan. This palette compared to the others doesn't really have like a group of neutrals. Like in the previous palette, there was a good group of like really deep browns and like you could blend them all together. There was like a stage of browns. This one I find is a lot more ready toned. It's not like your traditional browns. I've just switched to a Zoeva 227 just to help blend that outer edge. Then I'm going to grab another 227 and go in with this shade here, which is called Clay. And it blends in with that cocoa shade really, really nicely. So it's just that more muted yellow. The khaki tones in this palette are my absolute fave, but I couldn't do another khaki look. I've done them so much. I think people are getting sick of my khaki looks. I'm just going to start teasing that out slightly towards my hairline. This kind of like pulled out look became a bit of my signature at some point through 2020 as well. I got absolutely obsessed with hairline blends. I think that really stems from, I started following a lot of South American artists, so a lot of Brazilian and Argentinian, and I can't think of any more countries in South America right now, but a lot of the makeup artists create like these drama filled, like really eccentric looks. Just getting my bronzer brush just to help blend that yellow into that outer portion. So now that it looks like this, obviously it's not the same. So I need to go back in with my colours. So I'm just going to go back down my stages. So in with Coco and then back in with Blackberry and build the colours up. So you've already seen me put them on. So I'll just speed through this section a little bit. Now I'm going to cut my crease and I had to include this technique because it has been one of my faves as of late. So we want that nice super sharp cut crease and obviously because we've got 
some different tones on the lid. We don't want any of this eyeshadow muddying our colour up at all. So we want that nice and sharp. So I am going to take my tin of Vaseline, just regular old Vaseline, and I'm going to do a rough sketch of my crease with this first, just to clean all that area up so it's nice and blank before we go in. So I always like to make sure I cover anywhere that needs to come off. So anything that's on the lid, that gets covered too. Then we just grab a cotton board and we wipe away. Look how easy that comes off. So to fill in that crease, I'm just going to go back in with my P. Louise base in number two. Oh my God, I completely forgot to mention this brush before. This is my absolute holy grail cut crease brush. It is from House of Butte. I don't know if it's Butte or like Butte, because it's got a little dash over the E on the end. And it is the CC2. It is just super fine and super small. It is the perfect crease cutting brush. <laughs> Then to fill in the eyelid space, I'm going to go in with some pigments. So I have mentioned these quite a lot before, but it is the Peaches and Cream pigments. These are always a fave of mine. I use them constantly. So I've got two shades today. I have got Hocus Pocus, which is this deeper purple. And then I have got Fantasy, which is like a white, but it reflects purple. So I'm going to get them right on top of that wet concealer base and i'm just going to use a zoeva 234 i feel like all of my brushes look absolutely battered i feel like i need a full new set of brushes so i'm going to start with hocus pocus just get that on the outer portion so we're creating a little bit of like an ombre I use the exact same one to go in with Fantasy. And I'm going to overlap these ever so slightly. So Fantasy is a little bit more glittery, like more of a glitter finish. So I'm just going to overlap it into Hocus Pocus. Then the last stage on the top of the eye, I'm just going to grab the black from the palette, which is called Black Beach. And I'm going to take my Molly O'Brien Talia brush. So this is just this like flat packing brush. I'm just going to pack a little bit of that along my lash line. So as you can see from this eye, we have got a big lash on the go today. So I'm going to use my favourite brand. These are the ones I have in my kit all the time for my clients. And it is the Blinky Boo eyelashes. And I have got the style Sophia today, which are, if I turn to the side, can you see the thickness, the curl? I feel like they look quite small on my eyes because I've got huge, giant bug eyes. So while I wait for them lashes to dry, I'm going to pop on some mascara. So that is the top of the eye all completed. I'm just going to move on and quickly fill in the under eye with all of the shades that we used on top. I'm just cleaning up that line with that brush we put our setting powder on with earlier. And then I'm just going to pop on a little bit of mascara on them bottom lashes. So I've just zoomed you all back out because it is time for the lips. And there is only one lip liner brand that I have been obsessing over for a while now. It is the Morphe Lip Liner Pencils and I've got the shade Sweetheart today. These pencils are super creamy, super colourful, like super full coverage, so buildable. And they are so cheap, they're about £4. <laughs> Then for lipstick, I'm going to use the Dolls House Cosmetics Liquid Lipstick, and this is the shade number one. And what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a little dab on each lip like that. And then I'm going to grab a fluffy brush and just blend that in. It feels so lightweight. It's not too drying. It's absolutely stunning. This has been my favourite nude for 
ever since I got it for a couple months now. So I absolutely had to put a gloss on with today's look because I could not make a full face of phase video without talking about Fenty Gloss Bomb. So this is the shade Sweet Mouth and I am obsessed with these little things. I think the shades are killer. I know they've just brought out the new ones that aren't like shimmery, but the shimmery ones are to die for. The formula is so nice. They are super, super glossy. I love that really wet lip look. I'm just gonna finish everything off with a touch of Urban Decay All Nighter. And that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my favourite products in action and finding out what I've been loving at the moment. If you did like this video, please, please give it a big thumbs up. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button because I am back. Leave me a little comment as well and let me know what some of your favourite products recently have been like. What have you been obsessing over? But thank you all so much for watching today's video and I hopefully will see you all in the next one. Bye!